united with Christ. Meet local churches with open doors serving throughout the Border Valley community and sharing the truth and hope of God's love and salvation. A presentation of Life Christian Broadcasting Television. And now, United with Christ. Good morning, dear friends. Welcome to this broadcast of United for Christ. It's a joy to have you with us today. Uh, you know, uh, all across El Paso, the different Bible-believing, Christ-exalting, God-honoring churches, we are in cooperation with each other. We're united for Christ. We're all trying to reach people for Christ and get them discipled and, uh, well, ultimately get us all to heaven. So glad that you've tuned in today. I have a very special guest with us today that I'll introduce to you in just a few moments. But before I do, there's a theme that I have, uh, uh, well, I've been using and I want to come back to on these Tuesday mornings. And that is finding our identity in Christ. You know, we try to find our identity in all kinds of things before we come to Christ. You know, through our talents, through our abilities, uh, through what we own, uh, our jobs, whatever. And uh, I remember well trying to find my identity and found my identity somewhat a very limited identity uh, as I was raised up in my dad's auto repair garage and uh, learned to build my own hot rod cars. And uh, when I was in my car, I kind of knew who Eddie Lee was, at least I thought I did. But it wasn't until as a young adult, even though I'd known Christ as a child, but as a young adult, I really surrendered my life to the Lord and found out who I really was in Christ. And then no matter what I was doing, my identity was, was in Christ. I was a Christian and uh, that trumps everything else. So I want to remind us of Acts chapter 17, verse 28. It says, for in him, in Christ, in our Lord, we live and move and have our being. And then also in Colossians chapter 1, it says, Christ in you is the hope of glory or the hope of heaven. So when we really know Christ, we really begin to know who we are. And with that in mind, I'm going to introduce you to Lisa Bacchus. Lisa, welcome. Thank you, Pastor. It's Glad to be here. Good to see you today. And uh, knowing you, uh, really got acquainted with uh, you and Ron, your husband, right after we moved here, when we moved here to uh, found uh, Harvest Christian Center. That's been nearly 28 years ago. It's been a while. Yeah, and uh, found out right from the beginning how interested you were in helping save babies from being aborted. Helping save moms and dads, too. And uh, <laughs> That's right. Yes. Yes, because everybody's affected negatively when that happens, right? Yes, we've been doing that quite a while. So you had already found your identity in Christ before I met you. How did that happen? <laughs> Actually, it had to do with the abortion that I had. Oh, I really? am a post-abortive woman, uh, and in my college years was anything but Christian and had an abortion and had a priest here in town. I was no religion at all. Tell me that I needed to go outside and work with some pro-life ladies to figure out my salvation, my forgiveness, according to him. But anyway, I did start going out and I had some lovely ladies that just loved on me, mentored me, helped me heal and that's been almost 30 something years. Wow. Uh, my husband and I are still out of the sidewalk, still ministering to women at the abortion clinic, still turning them away. But God, I used to be a Christian school teacher. God has, has decided that part of my life is over. And I am now the executive director of Westside Pregnancy Center. We have our grand opening just coming up in a few weeks, December 5th. Everyone's invited. It's from two to seven o'clock. Love for you to come and see our center. Um, so and you, before you, uh, you were involved in other uh, pregnancy centers and efforts to... Not necessarily, well, sort of, mostly out on the sidewalks at the abortion clinics themselves. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Just just offering women don't do this. Yeah. I mean, there's nobody better. I mean, Alcoholics Anonymous, things like that. They work on people who were hurt by yeah. that to get people out of that. So it was a, it's That's the good. same principle. Yes, it's great. Well, tell me uh, and tell us um, more about this. This this is a new pregnancy center. What's the name of it again? West Side Pregnancy Center. It's at 201 East Sunset. And we are the only pregnancy center on the west side. We have a beautiful, another group that's downtown, another group far east and northeast, but there's been nothing on the west side. Right. And God just put it on my heart when we were out offering alternatives on Saturday mornings that uh, there needed to be something close to our big abortionist, Dr. Thayard, yeah. who has a clinic by El Paso High and a clinic in New Mexico where he can skirt the Texas laws and it's pretty much wide open. He can do anything out there. There are no laws, no restrictions. Any wow. age can come. It's it's very sad. It is sad. Yeah, you can have. Um, I mean, in Texas, you need a parental consent, so a parent has. There's a 24-hour waiting period. In New Mexico, I could take my next-door neighbor's 12-year-old if I wanted to, and mom and dad would never know. All of you New Mexico residents, and I am one also. <laughs> Me too. We need to. Get word to our legislators that we don't like that at all. We need a law where parental consent before an abortion is uh, is law. We yeah. need that desperately. So proud of what you're doing, Lisa. And uh, so you gave the address, but that is in the facility of uh, another church. Well, it's there's or next door. There, to it. Next door to a church. Uh, next door to Westside Community Church. Yes. They've graciously built us a beautiful center. Uh, and we've been working on getting all the government papers and getting it furnished, and, and now we're ready, like I said, for our grand opening on December 5th that anyone is welcome to from 2 o'clock to 7 o'clock. Yeah. Um, we need people to come in because we need more volunteers. We need your time, your talent, your treasure. Obviously, we need money to run this place, yes. so I need donors. Uh, you can visit our website. We have a lovely website, www.westsidepregnancycenter.com. Um, we're all about choosing life, protecting hearts, and restoring joy. Uh, we're going to work with post-abortive women as well as women who are considering abortion. We want to show them that there's, they're not walking alone. There's somebody to help them. And obviously, we want to bring them to Christ because that's yeah. going to be the ultimate help that they can have. Yes. That's wonderful. We uh, at Harvest Christian Center, uh, I didn't introduce myself a while ago. I am Pastor Eddie Lee of Harvest Christian Center. But uh, we're going to begin immediately uh, supporting the West Side uh, Pregnancy Center. Thank you. And uh, that's what it's called, West Side Pregnancy Center. West Side Pregnancy Center, because yeah. we're on the west side of town. Yes, and we're going to immediately begin, and we really encourage you, if pastors are watching, please put it as a part of your missions outreach. Uh, monthly, they need monthly support, uh, because bills come due monthly. <laughs> and the needs are presented monthly, uh, all the time. And so we would appreciate that. So, uh, my, tell me what, what will happen when uh, someone comes into your pregnancy center, some young lady or some boyfriend or a husband of someone that they're wanting a divorce, uh, not a divorce, but an abortion, pardon me. When they come in wanting an abortion, when they come in wanting an abortion, um, we will put them with an advocate. An advocate will go back in the room with them. Um, we are part of CareNet. That's mm, a yes. national organization. Yes. Um, and we'll follow their guidelines. But we're basically going to be a listening ear. Because at this point, the only listening that they're doing is fear. Yeah. They're hearing fear say, you can't. You're going to your parents are going to kick you out, your whatever it is. Your, your husband's going to leave you, your boyfriend's going to leave you. And so we want them to know that there's people out there that will walk through this with them, stand with them. Um, we have different organizations in town that we can reference them to, show them how to find help. Um, adoption's always the loving option that they can do if they absolutely say they can't keep a baby. I, I know that would be tremendously hard. Mm -hmm. But as an adoptive mom myself, uh, my abortion did leave me infertile, which was very hard. But God is so gracious. He uh, opened the door to adoption. I have a 27-year-old and a 29-year-old who are just the joys of my husband and I's life. Um, God turns 
everything around when you just Amen. turn to him. And hey. that's what we want to show the girls well, that come in. Do you have the ability to show them the baby in the womb at this point? We do have an ultrasound machine. Um, and down the road, we're, we're going to need to do the medical part of that right now. It's just the counseling. We need to do the medical part of that, but we will eventually be doing ultrasounds also, okay, which great. will help a lot because most women, when they see the baby, it's a different thing. Yes, it really is. Uh, that's another reason they're going to need some donations <laughs> quickly. In fact, we're asking you, and if you're watching, and uh, we'd like for you, especially if you're on the west side, but any part of town, uh, tell your pastor about this new west side pregnancy center. Uh, we need to get the word out to as many people as we possibly can that this is operating. When is the opening date? December 5th, which is a Thursday. Grand opening is December 5th from 2 o'clock to 7 o'clock. We'll have some goodies there too. All right. But we'd it. love to show you the beautiful facilities and, and hopefully we'll win your heart and you'll join with us. All right. So it's a come and go thing between two uh, and, and, and seven. seven. They can stay the whole time if they want. Yeah, right. <laughs> All right. But um, so in your uh, working out on the streets, out on the sidewalk, and just encouraging people that are going to one of these abortion clinics to consider the alternative of keeping their, that baby. Um, how, how difficult is that to uh, talk to those people who are going into an abortion clinic? Well, it is a very, it is a very different generation. Mm -hmm. um, just to give you, I'm not a big statistics person, but just to give you an idea, back in the 90s, we would easily turn away, the group of us that was there, we would easily turn away eight to 12 people a weekend. Wow. Um, now, in this whole year, there has been about 400 abortions to the 15 turnaways oh. that we've had. It's just a harder generation. They believe the lie. They yeah. believe the lie that this is like removing a mole and it has no consequences know on your spirit, on your body. Um, they've been fed a very feminist line, that it's our body. And another person can, ha they, the baby can have a different blood type. It, it's another person. And it's sad because they will find that out later. But if they really believe it was another person at that point, maybe that would be different. I, you know, in thinking about that, the. Uh, well, it's been clinically, it's been medically proven really now that life begins at conception, mm -hmm. right? Uh, do you talk about that to someone that will listen to you? Uh, we talk about everything that we can possibly. Yeah. We don't show them. We're not the kind of group that shows them graphic, ugly pictures. We don't try to scare them. We try to let them see this is what the truth is. We have little baby models that we'll show them a little baby model. Um, and when they'll really listen, I'm thinking of one girl recently that uh, we talked to, gave literature to, she went in anyway, because usually when we're talking to them and they'll take the literature and they'll engage, they will say, I can't do this, and they'll leave. Uh, this lady went in, we were really sad, and she stayed there. We stay until they leave also to offer them help again. Please take some literature. Please, this is someone you can contact for help afterward for post-abortive syndrome. But this one lady walked out to her, her big white car, I can, I can just see it, and she, she was crying, and I just was heartbroken. I thought she went through with it, and she's already hurting, but she turned around in her tears and said, I chose life. Praise God. And she couldn't talk to us. Hallelujah. She was so overcome. Praise the Lord. And Hallelujah. that's what we live for out there. Well, that is wonderful. Wow. You know, with your own testimony, and uh, then finding Christ and finding your identity in Christ. And of course, that's really what we want to help these young people or no matter what age they are, we want to help them do is find their identity in Christ because when they do that, they will also have a greater respect for all of life, whether it's the, the elderly or the infirm or, uh, you know, someone that is disabled 
um, or a baby in a womb. Um, I think when we find our identity in Christ, then we begin to have an eternal perspective. Uh, listen, friends, if you're watching today and you've never found who you really are, I challenge you uh, to let Jesus Christ, the divine Son of God, who came into this world in a human body, he lived for 33 and a half years without sinning. And then he who had no sin became sin's sacrifice for us on the cross of Calvary. The Bible says it plain, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, uh, verses 17 through 21. You can find it for yourself. And he that knew no sin became sin for us or sin's sacrifice for us so that uh, we who have sinned could, made, could be made pure and acceptable to God and God could extend his mercy to us. And when you find your identity in Christ, then you can live the rest of your life in this human body that God has given us, knowing who you are as a child of God. And it'll give you a brand new respect for life, for your own life and for the life of others. And I'll guarantee you, when you really get to know Jesus Christ, uh, you'll have respect for that baby in the womb. Even if it's an unwanted pregnancy, an unplanned pregnancy, you will begin to know that that's, that's a real human being in the womb. And you know, it's like God said to Jeremiah, and uh, he, he could say it to all of us, I knew you when you were in your mother's womb. I knew you before you were ever born. And uh, take time to read Psalm 139. It talks about that also. So, Lisa, uh, you know, when, when you have been out on the sidewalk, you've done this for many years now and helped uh, to, do you ever get the chance just to really right there on the sidewalk? lead someone to Christ? Very seldom. Mm -hmm. Very seldom. Well, of course, the conversation is about the baby in their womb, right? Yes, mm -hmm. it is. It was yeah. much easier 30 years ago to lead people to Christ, but it's, it's been much harder now. You know, I found in some, in, in some respects that's, that's true uh, no matter what you're talking about. But then I've also found a new openness really just recently in talking to people when we just begin to engage them in conversation and then to ask them questions about their life and about their home and then maybe saying something like, is there anything I can pray with you about? I believe in prayer. I believe that God answers prayer. And uh, I've, I've found a new openness when uh, uh, people are really just begin to think about their life or you begin to talk to them and ask them questions. You know, the Bible says in 1 Peter that we're to, to be uh, able to give a reason for the hope we have. And so sometimes so many people don't have much hope for the future in our world and with all that's going on around the world. And so when we begin to give hope and say, oh boy, I have, I have hope just for tomorrow. I have hope for the rest of today. And uh, then uh, ask them, what's your hope for tomorrow? <laughs> you know, and, and as the, they begin to say what they may be hoping for or what, it doesn't matter what they really say. Really, we can begin to weave the way toward Jesus Christ who gives us hope not only for this life, but for the life to come. And, you know, Pastor, that's why I'm excited about this pregnancy center, mm -hmm. because it's such a fleeting moment Yeah. as they're getting in their cars and running inside the clinic yeah. or as they're coming out to smoke a cigarette and you're, you're trying to talk to them. This is going to be such a safe right. haven. It's quiet. It's beautiful. It's peaceful. It's going to be very conducive to having that conversation. And yeah. there I know we'll be able to lead them to Christ. Why don't you tell again the name of the pregnancy center, where it is, the phone number, uh, and say it slowly so that people can write it down. If they're watching, you may have a relative 
uh, that, or maybe your own daughter that's, or a son whose girlfriend is pregnant, and uh, you begin to see the need, try to save that baby. Give that to us. This is a brand new pregnancy center on El Paso's west side. Okay, it's called West Side Pregnancy Center. We're at 201 East Sunset Road. That's just off the crossroads. And our phone number is 703-3001. All right. And, uh, and don't forget that our grand opening is this coming up December 5th from 2 to 7. All right, so it's not open quite yet. Not yet. Uh, but after December the 5th, and what will be the hours that you'll be open? We'll be open Wednesdays, no, Wednesday is office work, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday uh, from 10 to, oh, I don't have it memorized yet because we're brand new and I didn't write it down. Okay. We'll be open from about, Saturdays will be a, 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 an important day because hopefully we'll have people coming from the clinic. Sidewalk counselors there will be bringing people to us. So Saturdays will be open from 9 to 2, and then that Thursday and Friday before will be about the same hours. Okay. They, they'll have to call us to get the hours because I forgot. All right, but uh, you have the telephone number, and so you can call, in fact, and uh, will the phone be answered in those same hours? Yes. Okay. All right. So, we, and give a website again. Website is www.westsidepregnancycenter.com. All right. Westsidepregnancycenter.com. Oh, listen, there's, uh, there's a lot of effort right now. I mean, we just came through the 40 Days for Life, the uh, Southwest Coalition for Life. They're doing a great job, too, and the other pregnancy centers in our city. But uh, we can't let up. And so I'm so proud of you, uh, Lisa, and all the effort you've put into this. Uh, I'm very thankful for Westside Community Church and Pastor Joe there and, and the way that congregation has helped to provide a facility that uh, you can use. And, and uh, we really want to save lives. Uh, we want to save eternal souls, but we want to see, save babies uh, from being aborted so that... Uh, entire family can be healthy because what happens what happens when a mother aborts a baby a lot of times in 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 the near future right after that and then later they have no idea when something is going to hit them they can actually they can look up on the website uh, post-abortion syndrome it is a medical term uh, just like Post, what do they call it? When Postpartum? They, po no, when they go to the military and they oh. have flashbacks oh, later. Oh, yeah, PTSD. PTSD, very similar, yeah. post-abortive syndrome, because you'll, you'll dream. Mm -hmm. Oh, my gosh, my little boy, my little girl. My, it's part of your life. It's not just something that you, you know, you can remove a wart. That's just a wart. But you know that you removed, and then if you end up being the one in three that are infertile, now you have that compounding it. I, I, I could have had a baby. Now I can't have babies. Yeah. There's so much drug addiction that follows, alcoholism to try to mask it. And on another, I'm thinking, gosh, some of the great diseases that we have in the world may have already been cured, yeah. but we killed the babies. that doctor, that scientist that would have found the cure for something. Mm -hmm. We don't know what harm we're doing to ourselves and to our planet. Wow. Did you, uh, how long was it after your abortion that you came to the Lord? It was about six months afterwards. I was driving from the west side to the east side for yet one more argument with my boyfriend who I had been with for five years. We were engaged, one more fight, and I was in a car that was a 1961 Mercedes we were fixing up. It had not one safety feature, and I just started crying saying, I can't take this anymore. There was just such oppression. I didn't know what it was back then. Now I know it was so, so, so much demonic oppression on me of, of what I did. Because the, the, the liar, the Satan, loves to come in and say, look what you did. You know, I'm going to urge you to do something. And now that you've done it, look what you did. And I remind, remember driving down the freeway saying, there's not one safety feature in this car. I just want to kill myself. Ooh. And the feeling came so heavy that it felt like a warm bath. It just was comforting to know wow. that I could end my life. So that's what I did. I slammed on, the, it was like 
7.30, 8 o'clock in the morning, I slammed on the gas and I thought I'll go towards Saragossa because there's some big pylons there. I'll wreck into it and it'll be over. And I really, really wanted that. So that's what I was doing. And then as I started getting closer to the Zaragoza exit, I was like, what am I doing? What am I doing? And I took my foot off the gas and I thought, I've got to go somewhere. Well, the malls, nowhere was open at that time because it was too early. And I happened to look down. I saw a big white building. I thought, it's a maquila. I'll just make up. This sounds crazy, but that's what goes through your mind. Yeah. I, I thought, I'll go into that maquila and I'll tell them my car's broken. And if I can just be around people and get myself back together wow. for just a minute. Well, I walked in and it was a church. Oh, praise God. And I got born again that day. Hallelujah. And God is good. Yes, that is marvelous, wonderful. Oh, that's a great testimony. So the, the PTSD had gotten a hold of you. I guess so. <laughs> and, uh, but uh, you found the right place. I did. Wow. I found a loving God who didn't accuse me, who said, yeah, praise I can forgive God. you even of that. Uh, and I think there's a lot of poster board of women that don't know. Yes, there's yeah. forgiveness for that too. Yes. Oh, that's marvelous. Well, dear friends, we've had Lisa back us with us today and uh, the new West Side Pregnancy Center, 201 Osborne. East, Sun East. East Sunset. East Sunset. 201 East Sunset. Sorry, I, you turn on Osborne to get there sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I do. But... Anyhow, God bless you. It's been great to have you with us, and you've heard a great testimony from this woman who now, 30-something years later, is heading up this new West Side uh, Clinic uh, Pregnancy Center, West Side Pregnancy Center to help rescue those babies. You know, we've been talking about that and about finding your identity in Christ. I want to really encourage you friend, if you don't know Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord of your life, I mean, when you come to know Him, you'll begin to know who you are because then you'll begin to know what your purpose in life is. You see, life has to be more than just the monotony of getting up and going to work, and coming home and eating and watching TV and going to bed and doing the same thing. Oh, and it is much more than that. We all have an eternal purpose. In Christ, God knows who we are and He loves us and He's wired us in a certain way. And when we surrender our lives to Him, then uh, He can begin to help us fulfill the purpose that He's planned for us. So I invite you to accept Christ as your Savior. May God bless you. It's been great to be with you. United for Christ.